After overseeing Yamaha's racing endeavors for the past 26 years, Lynn Jarvis will leave his position following the current MotoGP season. The announcement was released a week after Yamaha signed top rider Fabio Quartararo to a contract that will expire at the end of 2026. Jarvis has led Yamaha to some of its most remarkable championship-winning campaigns, including each of Valentino Rossi's victories with the Japanese manufacturer. Yamaha's project seems to be in excellent hands after hiring numerous important professionals, including new technical director Max Bartolini, who was previously with Ducati, even though Jarvis's departure will mean huge shoes to fill. In response to rumors that he is now the highest paid rider in MotoGP, Fabio Quartararo has spoken. Welcome to Bike GP. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon for more updates. Quartararo turned down Aprilia's offer to sign a new contract for an estimated 12 million euros year with Yamaha. But even with Yamaha's large financial resources, their bike is still worrisomely uncompetitive. Although he hasn't quite replicated that performance this season, the 2021 world champion finished on one of his three Grand Prix podiums of the 2023 season at the Circuit of the Americas last year. Quartararo, who qualified 16th, beat 2023 America's GP winner Alex Rins, a teammate from Yamaha, by just one spot in Saturday's 10-lap race. Quartararo claims Yamaha has attempted something big on the M1 in each session as it attempts to make its way back to the front of the grid, and he believes this is the only course of action the Japanese manufacturer can take, given its dismal performance. Quartararo responded, Yes, I mean, Every run we did this weekend was trying something big on the bike. We even rode out for the sprint on a bike we had never used, and I think that is pretty good given our current situation to try big things. Completing P13 or P15 won't really make a difference for us, and even though the results don't reveal anything, I think our working methods are sound, but we're attempting things that we haven't done before. Quartararo used the internal reorganization process that the Japanese team's technical section had started to support his choice in Texas, the appointment of Massimo Bartolini, Gigi's right-hand man at Ducati, as technical director is the most significant part of this. Many contrasted Quartararo's predicament to that of Marc Marquez's previous season, when he quit Honda after 11 years and joined the satellite Grassini team, where he competes on a Ducati that isn't even the newest model, prior to the rider's official renewal. Even though Quartararo made the opposite choice, Marquez, 31, is aware of the factors that motivated the 24-year-old to give Yamaha another shot. Marquez stated, I'm not surprised that Quartararo has stayed at Yamaha. First and foremost, because Honda is Honda and Yamaha is Yamaha. They are going to get there sooner or later. A lot of people have compared it to my situation, but Fabio has a lot more time than I had left. The lack of trauma like the one he went through after his arm injury at Jerez in 2020, which required four surgeries, is another factor that makes the Spaniard sympathetic to his rival's decision. It's clear from Quartararo's 15th and 12th place crossings of the line on Saturday and Sunday that the Iwata-based constructor will need a long time to heal. The 2021 world champion is currently ranked 12th in the standings following the first three Grand Prix of the calendar. His best finish to far was 7th in Portugal. When queried about the financial terms of his contract, Quartararo said, we're not going to lie to each other. I think, yes, as a rider, I have value. And Yamaha is well aware of that. It is an honor that a company like Yamaha is placing a wager on me. I've been with them for a number of years. The project for the upcoming several years is, of course, the main justification. In terms of finances, I believe that was a minor consideration in this contract. Restoring Yamaha to the top of the MotoGP standings is the objective the 2021 champion maintains. Yamaha maintains that their goal is to stay at the top of the MotoGP standings for the long run. Despite the fact that Lynn Jarvis will step down as team principal at the end of 2024 after 26 years, he has outlined the team's return strategy. After acquiring the Frenchman, the manager's attention is now on getting back the satellite team that Yamaha lost at the end of 2022 when they decided not to extend their contract with RNF and instead signed with Aprilia. Currently, there are just two M1s on the grid which is a clear disadvantage that Jarvis is working to address at a time when the analysis of bike data has become essential to their development. But before he can fulfill that dream, he needs to persuade one of the independent teams, which will be difficult given that switching from the Ducati, they race on to a Yamaha, which hasn't placed in the top three in races in over a year, will be their only option. Prior to a few months ago, the majority of the indicators pointed to VR46 
as the ideal organization for the partnership that the Iwata factory was searching for, particularly given the connection between Valentino Rossi and the Japanese producer. Between 2004 and 2009, Rossi won four world championships with Yamaha. The Japanese company appointed him as a brand ambassador last year. In actuality, though, the Tavulia-based squad is just a step away from pledging itself to Ducati for another two years, with the chance to commit even longer. The latter is not a small matter, as it is now that the pieces are being set on the board, where the game will start in 2027, that the new technical regulations, which are indicated by the engine displacement being reduced to 850cc and the aerodynamics being limited, come into effect. I'm still optimistic that we can have a satellite team again in 2025, because that's what we want. Jarvis stated. VR46 and Ducati haven't formalized anything yet, as far as I'm aware. Reaching our objective would be fantastic news for Yamaha and the championship. The offer VR46 received from Borgo Panigale fulfilled nearly all of Rossi's tribe's aspirations, in spite of the Yamaha boss's wishes. His manager and Rossi's right-hand man, Alessio Salucci, expressed his acknowledgement in this way. It's my second home, Yamaha. However, what they ought to give us right away is a bike that is more competitive. The Ducati is an excellent motorcycle with excellent performance. We owe our partners this. The shift is not simple, Salucci remarked. The only but, in Salucci's opinion, is that Pramac currently holds the exclusive status of Factory des Mosedici. Thus, the Bologna-based company denies him that opportunity for the next two seasons. Now that VR46 is almost out of the picture, Yamaha will try to entice Paolo Campanotti's squad by playing the sentimental card. Pramac has until after the summer vacation to exercise an option entitling it to a unilateral 2026 renewal with Ducati. It would be the only team having factory support from the Italian mark for an additional two seasons if it signs. It would lose that exclusivity after 2027, along with one of the two official bikes it presently fields for Jorge Martin and Franco Morbidelli, the runners-up in 2023. Even though a relegation like this could be agonizing, it is unlikely that Pramac would consider resigning from its current position, one that gives it the opportunity to compete for the championship and win races, as well as one that ensures it will retain the visibility it would otherwise lose by joining Yamaha. If Pramac chooses the latter, VR46 will probably take up that coveted position until 2026, increasing the number of factory Ducatis from zero to two. Due to the current strain in the partnership between Pramac and VR46, Ducati is considering all options. Yamaha will likely have to seek elsewhere if Campanotti decides to take advantage of the wonderful moment his team is experiencing, which would likely force it to try to convince Grissini. In order to entice Marc Marquez to continue, the Fianza team is also attempting to persuade Ducati to provide it with an official Desmo Sedici in 2025. That is an unlikely scenario right now, since many people in the industry want to receive such favorable treatment from the dominant constructor in the series, which wants to minimize its investment in the championship. It's true that Grassini has prolonged the term of the deal until the end of 2025, but there's also a release provision that may be activated with payment of a fee. Whether Yamaha would be prepared to pay the price to return four M1s to the racetrack is still up in the air. What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comment down below and don't forget to like and subscribe for new upcoming videos of MotoGP. Thanks for watching!